Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, Bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Acts, the sixth and seventh chapters. Now in these days, when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Pacorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. And these they set before the apostles, and they prayed, and laid their hands on them. And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, and of the Cyrenians, and of the Alexandrians, and of those from Cilicia and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. And Stephen said, You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did not your fathers persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered, you who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. Now, when they heard these things, they were enraged, and they ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, 
receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes from the book of 1 Peter, the second chapter. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, a living stone rejected by men in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builder rejected has become the cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people, Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you also may be, and you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. But the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. Or else believe on the account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son, If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We continue with our hymn of the day, hymn 461, the first four stanzas of I Know That My Redeemer Lives.
pray with me. May the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be acceptable on thy sight, O God, our strength and our risen Redeemer. Amen. Let not your hearts be troubled. Have you ever heard somebody say that? Or perhaps it was worded more like, oh, don't worry, or you have nothing to worry about. The person saying it is likely not trying to be dismissive. They probably have a a good motive. They're trying to be encouraging. They might mean well. And now, before I go on, please understand, I am not trying to raise anyone's anxiety. I'm just trying to be completely honest. Whenever I hear somebody say something like, let not your hearts be troubled, I sometimes, not always, sometimes think, well, why not? Why shouldn't I let my heart be troubled? What great authority do you have to tell me I have nothing to worry about? Now, of course, I've I've only ever thought this. I have never actually said it to anybody or asked anybody those questions. But I wonder how they would respond if I did. Sure, some people can be overly pessimistic, uh, overly worrisome. But neither you nor I have the foresight or the authority to guarantee somebody that they truly have nothing to worry about. To to be able to say to somebody, let not your heart be troubled. How many times have you been completely prepared for a, a test or a job interview and then totally bombed? How many times has a routine surgery gone terribly wrong? How many times has a freak accident come out of nowhere and changed somebody's life forever? Again, I'm not trying to make anyone anxious or or, or paranoid. These are just the thoughts that I've had. In our gospel lesson this morning, from the beginning of John chapter 14, Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. Now, as I read this, my first thought actually wasn't, well, why not? What gives you the right? Instead, my first thought was, wait, what? It's kind of like whenever you have an epistle reading that begins with, therefore, It should alert you that you've missed something, that Paul or or whoever authored this particular epistle has been making a case prior to this, and now you have been led up to the conclusion. So he has said all of this, and then he says, therefore, and goes on with his argument. So when this text begins with, let not your hearts be troubled, it should raise your interest. Why would my, or, or why would the disciples' Hearts be troubled in the first place. Well, in John chapter 14, we are in the upper room with Jesus and his disciples. It's Maundy Thursday. They're they're celebrating the Last Supper together. And, And in chapter 13, Jesus tells them that one of them will betray him. He also predicts Peter's denial. They've got to be a bit on edge Plus, Jesus knows that, that, that he, where he's going to start going and some of the things he's going to start talking about, that they're going to sound pretty strange and upsetting to them. Not to mention that within 24 hours, Jesus is going to be arrested, beaten, and crucified. With all that in mind, Jesus says, let not your hearts be troubled. But Jesus Why not? Why shouldn't my heart be troubled? What authority do you have to... (laughs) Okay, I get it. Actually, Jesus answers those questions in in verse 10. After Philip says in in verse 8, Lord, show us the Father, and that is enough for us. Jesus eventually goes on to say, Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe in me that I am in the believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe on the on account of the works themselves. Jesus does have the authority, because he and the Father are one. Nobody knows when this pandemic will be over. 
We, we can try to comfort people by saying things like, don't worry, everything is going to be fine. Your job, your business will be okay. You'll be safe. You'll be healthy. Soon enough, everything is going to start returning to normal. Now, all of that might be true. But for someone who is anxious, someone who is worried, someone who is grieving, these words can sound incredibly hollow, coming from someone who doesn't actually know, for, from someone who has no authority to make such a declaration. So where can someone who is anxious turn? Where can someone who is worried or grieving find comfort? They can turn to the words of Jesus. They can turn to the words that he shared with his disciples as they were about to enter some crazy and uncertain times. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am going, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. May you all find comfort in Christ Jesus. Amen. And now may the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our service continues as we confess our common Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Normally in our service, this is where we would be collecting an offering, but obviously we cannot do that. We want to thank everybody who has, has faithfully continued to support uh, Mount Olive and our ministry through either uh, dropping checks off in the office or sending uh, them in through the mail, also uh, through giving online. Uh, we, we graciously ask that you would continue to support this ministry. We now come before God in prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, you have established the home and blessed those who show us your love. Bless all mothers and the children in their care. Bless all families and make their homes places of blessing and love where your word is spoken, forgiveness reigns, and love is displayed. Give us good examples to inspire youth to all that is good and pure, and to seek after these things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, your power brought all things into being, and still you preserve what you have made. Bless our President, the Congress of these United States, our Governor, and all elected and appointed civil servants, so that they may honor you and your purpose establishing order and justice, encouraging virtue, and protecting all life. Give wisdom and moderation to them in their leadership for the well-being of the nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O merciful Father, you have compassion on the sick and those in need, and have promised not to ignore them in their afflictions. 
Turn back the pandemic across the globe and give us relief. Bless the sick with healing, those who suffer with strength and patience, and the dying with peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate Father, you are not aloof to the needs of this body and life, and you have called us to love our neighbor in need and give aid to the poor. Give us courage and faith that we may not fear sharing the resources you have supplied with those who live in want, especially the widow, the orphan, and the unemployed. Let love be perfected among us to drive out selfish fears. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Father of eternal mercy, you have raised up witnesses in every age and blessed us with those who endured suffering and even death in faithfulness to Christ. We give you thanks for these faithful saints and martyrs, and we pray you to make us strong when we face the day of test, that at length we may be brought with them into the joy of your presence and the glory of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you, God, for the goodness in hearing the prayers of your people and granting us confidence to approach your throne of mercy. Hear us now in the name of and for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now receive the benediction of our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our service continues as we sing our closing hymn, the last four stanzas of hymn 461, I Know That My Redeemer Lives. <laughs>